Can you guess where I am? I'll give you a clue. It's not Nottingham. I'll tell you more at the end of the video. But in the meantime, the main purpose of this video is an interview with another science YouTuber, something we occasionally do here on 60 Symbols. And this one, well, he's probably one of the most popular of all the science YouTubers. And something else interesting in this video is we'll show you the YouTube clip that inspired him to become a YouTuber. Hello, I am Michael Stevens. I created and I host Vsauce, which is the first of three channels that we currently have. The channels investigate weird questions and we look at the science and math and history and geography of, of interesting things. Um, and by interesting, I mean anything. A big point of the channels is that even the most boring little thing can be amazing. Brady Heron, you are an example I use for this. You did a video on how paint dries. Because we're going to talk about watching paint dry. And microscopically speaking, drying paint is complicated and it is so cool. And it makes you appreciate the things that you look at. But yeah, we've been really fortunate and our audience is amazing and it's grown faster than we ever expected. I mean, I was at Comic-Con last year emailing uh, Kevin from Vsauce 2 saying, we're going to hit 700,000 soon. And now we're at 2.4 million. It just blows your mind, but it makes you realize how hungry people are for cool information and cool thoughts and that they not only want to watch content like this, but they want to share it. I don't have a master's or a higher degree from a graduate school. I have a, a bachelor's um, in neuropsychology from the University of Chicago and a bachelor's in English literature. So I was working on some pretty cool projects about religion and politics in the brain. At the same time, I got a grant from my school that I'd applied for to make really funny videos. Why? Because I saw a video on YouTube called Shining and it was made in probably 2006, 2007. We're talking very early days of YouTube. A guy took the, the horror movie, The Shining, and recut it into a trailer that made it look like a feel-good family comedy about warmth and love and adoption and, and children and parents, and it blew my mind. In 2006, 2007, such a thing had never existed. Maybe Letterman would have something like that, but for all you knew, it was made by you know, a huge production team. Shining was made by one guy for one competition and he warped the entire movie. And to have that kind of power, I thought, I've gotta do this. I've gotta learn how to edit. And the first projects that I made were literally copies of that format. I took Ferris Bueller's Day Off and I made it look like a horror film. No, no. So I watched the movie and I made notes of all the scary moments. People yelling, people kicking things, um, when Cameron like punches the car seat. If you add in the screams of a woman every time he hits it, it becomes terrifying. So I made this. Long story short, the, that video wound up, this is not gonna be long story short, this is short story long, but that video wound up on collegehumor.com. And Jeff Rubin from College Humor personally emailed me. He's like, I love your stuff, like send it directly to me. And that amount of encouragement was all I needed. Um, I applied for the grant and I used this money to, to spend a summer making episodes about politics because the election, uh, Barack Obama's 2008 election was happening at that time. So that's how I got into video. I was discovered by Ben Rellis who'd created Barely Political and I worked as a cameraman for them. And then after the election, the Key of Awesome started on Barely Political. I'm not musical. So um, I said, look, maybe I could do like a video game channel. I used a random name generator to come up with the name Vsauce. It meant nothing. It could become anything. And it became not a video game channel, but a channel where I discussed the things that I love. The time that I spent researching why do people have different eye color, I could actually turn it into an episode. I guess it began when I started a show called Boat, which was short for best of all time, because there was one topic that I really loved, and it was hot sauce. I was a hot sauce fiend. I bought the hottest sauce from the little Mexican markets in Brooklyn, and we're talking like painfully hot. It got to the point where it was affecting me, I was getting heartburn, and I had to stop. But I was that passionate about hot sauces, and I researched why they were hot, and why certain things helped the heat go away. Milk helps because it has a special enzyme that breaks down capsaicin. Let's begin with what makes hot peppers hot, a chemical called capsaicin. Capsaicin is an oil, which is why water doesn't help get rid of the 
the spiciness, but alcohol will, because alcohol will help um, mix in with that, that oil, whereas water won't. I thought this was fascinating, and so I made an episode of what's the hottest pepper of all time? For being the hottest pepper on earth. Boat, and it was so fun, and it did quite well, and I was so proud of it that I said, I wanna do more of these, and so I did, what's the loudest noise possible? What's the biggest hole on earth? It's kind of a funny title, which like, when you hear that title, how can you not click on it? At this point, all the ideas for the episodes come from conversations I have with friends, uh, other people that, I, that do educational videos, uh, which are a great source of inspiration, because they, they know things that I don't. They mention these things casually, and it blows my mind, and I'm like, uh, this is an episode, <laughs> right? And so I'll take a little nugget here, a nugget there. I'll look through notes that I've taken after I've read books, I keep draft emails of ideas I've had, and I'll scan through those and see if anything's related, and from that stitch together an episode that can fall under a common theme and can be labeled with usually a question, a title that asks a question that when read, the potential viewer just can't help but click on because, well, now the question's in your mind, and you don't know the answer, and you wanna know. I know that a video's ready to go into production when I need to put a video out. So if I need to put one out tomorrow, then the episode's gonna have to come out tomorrow and that means that I'm done. Wikipedia is amazing and I've found that um, despite some of its sort of stereotypes, it winds up being one of the most reliable up-to-date sources. For instance, we discover a new prime number, the, the, the largest prime number. Okay, well if you go to educational sites or college websites, have they updated yet? Probably not. And so when I use those resources, I actually will double check them with Wikipedia because it's, it's something that everyone can edit. Um, one case in, in, in particular, uh, I was looking for the longest word that you could type using just one row of a keyboard. Well, I found a great site all about word facts and I thought I had an answer. I checked on Wikipedia and at some Scrabble conference in 2011, some genius had discovered a word that technically was a word and could also be typed on one row. But that hadn't made it to these other sites that were updated by like individual webmasters. So, so Wikipedia, is a, it's a good place to go, it's a good place to start. Then I go on to academic papers, I read a lot of those, I watch a lot of lectures and a lot of videos that other people have made, and I love it because I can then shout out their videos as resources, putting them in the description or saying where I found it. And it's great because you can form relationships with these people just by sort of sending your viewers over to them and it's like saying hello, but instead of a, you know, bouquet of roses, you've got a bouquet of viewers who might become subscribers. You've got such a big audience. Do you worry about being wrong? <clears throat> yes, I worry about being wrong. And if I'm ever uh, worried, I will double check with people who are brilliant. Minute Physics, uh, Henry from Minute Physics has helped me out with some Skype conversations before. PhD Comics as well, they'll put me in touch with, oh, we, we know this, this one guy who's working on that exact problem, and I'll call, and usually the questions are so weird, people are like, don't really know the answer, but let's make sure we're in the right direction. I am very careful to, to clarify things using annotations if I need to, but luckily I haven't needed to do that very often. Look at the stuff that I did before I moved to the UK, before I realized how global the audience was. I'm using only imperial units because I wasn't even thinking that 60% of my audience was not in America. And so now I'm, I'm constantly thinking of how can I make sure this applies to everybody I'm, I'm definitely sourcing a lot of questions and criticisms from Twitter, from the comments, and I've got them in mind. I kind of, you know, I think about what they might like and what they might share and what I think that they should know. You spend a lot of time talking about great discoveries and scientists and things people do in research, and it clearly really inspires you. You started down a path you, at university. You did a bit of research. Do you ever wish you were playing the game instead of commentating on it? Well, obviously, I mean, the guys who play the game are the heroes. I'm just the guy who's like, whoa, look what that hero did. <laughs> uh, but I wasn't great at playing the game. I'm not organized enough. I'm not good enough to do that type of stuff. 
I could explain things and I could generate enthusiasm around them. And luckily I found an outlet for that to really point people to what these heroes are doing. I would love to be able to do more demonstrations. It's tough because I'm my own cameraman. There's no team that works on Vsauce. It's just me researching and then I perform the whole thing with a camera, an arm's reach away, and then I edit the footage. Um, and so it's, it's difficult for me to say, oh, all right, I'm gonna have a cameraman come out with me and we're gonna blow this thing up or we're gonna watch the sunset and talk about the, the way the sun uh, works, I don't know. But I can't do those demonstrations as easily. I would love to do more of those. I think that there are so many channels on YouTube though that are doing them well that I'm also happy just saying, go watch what these people did. It's amazing. So where am I and Michael? Well, we're both here in Palm Springs for the TED Active Conference as guests of TED Ed. And we're very happy guests too because it's unbelievably sunny.